Hello, my friends. In this series of lectures, we're going to examine social exchange theory proposed by George C. Homan. Uh, this uh, video will provide an introduction to social exchange theory. And I open it with a quote down here by my granddaughter, and I want to give you the context to that. She said, Papa, let's go to Cherry Berries. Of course, she wanted some ice cream. And I said, Baby, Papa's a diabetic, and Papa can't have ice cream. And she said, it's not for you, it's for me. She weighed the cost, which were minimal to her, subtracted them from the benefits, which were large, and determined that it was worth the profit of moving forward. She is a proponent of social exchange theory. Now, George Homans is considered the father of social exchange theory, and Homans noted that human relationships are formed by the use of an internalized cost-benefit analysis on the part of each individual involved. Now, I want you to notice that we said internalized. It's inside the person. The person is making the decision as to the cost or benefit of a particular behavior and making a decision as to whether the behavior should be employed or not. Social exchange theory is the idea that people are constantly determining personal benefit from actions. And social exchange theory views behavior as a self-directed and internal process. Now, keep in mind that being self-directed and internal, this is in contrast to the view of the behaviorists which believe that it is being driven from external things. Holman said that it is driven from internal things. And not only that, he said the human is, is constantly doing a cost-benefit analysis to look at what it the benefits are what the costs are and whether or not it's worth the effort to, to the individual to perform the specific behavior. Now, in order to illustrate this, we will examine these two individuals here on the screen. These two individuals may desire some sort of relationship. Perhaps they want to be friends. And the one in blue is considering the one in green. The one in green is considering the one in blue. Now, the one in blue, according to uh, Holman's uh, exchange theory, is, is asking herself, what will it cost to enter into this relationship, and what are the benefits of entering into this relationship? And the benefits minus the cost give the net profit or the net social gain from entering into the relationship. And, of course, the one in green is doing the same thing. What's it going to cost me? What benefits will I get from it? And will the net social gain be positive? In other words, these two are asking a simple question. What is in it for me? And while they ask that, we want to note that, they, that people are very prone to interrelationships that maximize the social benefits and minimize the social cost. Now, social exchange theory is founded on the following propositions. The first of these is that people make rational decisions regarding behavior. Well, I, I know that when you read that, you probably think about some relative that you have out there who is totally irrational and all sorts of things. But, but what Holmans is saying is, is that the person makes a conscious decision. Uh, I was in a meeting many years ago, and a gentleman stood up, and he said, no one can make you mad. You choose to be mad. I thought about that. No one can make me mad. And the first thing that came to my mind is he hasn't met my mother. Well, I laugh about that, but, but the, the idea of that the individual is in charge of the individual's reactions is very, and an individual's behavior is very much a part of social exchange theory. Now, Social exchange theory also holds that rational decisions are based on perceptions of net return. In other words, what am I going to get out of this? What am I going to have to pay? What am I going to get out of it? And is it worth the cost? And net return is internally calculated based on perceived benefit minus perceived cost. And of course, exchange theory operates within cultural norms. Now, I point that out to talk to you about perceived cost, perceived benefits, and net returns. Uh, cost and benefit of specific actions are very much internal and very subjective and very difficult to describe. The, the perceived cost and perceived benefits will differ by individual. 
Uh, perceived cost and perceived benefits not only will differ by individual, but within the same individual, they may differ over time as a person goes through the life course development. Now, not only are they, are they, do they differ by individuals and may they differ in the same individual over time, but cost and benefits may, uh, are, are greatly influenced by cultural norms and cultural expectations. So social uh, exchange theory recognizes that the role of cultural norms in, in determining the cost and benefits and in the calculation of net return on the decision. Now, the things you really need to note from this are that Holman said people make decisions. He, he pictured a little calculator up in the brain going click, 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 click. Uh, what's it going to cost? What am I going to gain? What's my net profit? And, and he saw this, this conscious decision making uh, going on constantly within the individual. And of course, he understood very much that the cost and the benefits uh, differ across people. They differ across cultural groups. They differ across time as well. Now, here's the basic formula of social exchange theory. It almost sounds like a business, doesn't it? Profit equals benefit minus cost. The benefit is what I get out of it. The cost is what I have to put into it. And the profit is my net gain. Now, in a social environment, that means I've got to pay this much, I get this much out of it, and is it worth the cost? And, and I, as an individual under social exchange theory, I am constantly sitting there thinking about what does it cost, what are the benefits, how much gain do I get out of it to make a determination as to whether or not it's worth the effort. Uh, when I was uh, preparing this, a quote from the book The Christmas Carol came to mind. When Scrooge died, one of his business partners in, in his vision uh, with the ghost of Christmas past, was talking about the funeral, said, I will attend the funeral, but I must be fed. I think that's a marvelous illustration of exchange theory. In other words, I'll go, but I've got to get something in return. Can't do it just simply uh, because I choose to, to do good for someone. Now, when you think about social exchange theory, I want to remind you that no theory explains everything. Uh, theories explain some things. And social exchange theory certainly does not explain everything. But social ex exchange theory explains some things. And the things that are explained by social exchange theory are of benefit to us. We see people as making rational decisions, weighing the cost against the benefit to determine the net gain that they have. In other words, what's in it for me? And then that driving them forward to make a specific decision or maybe incorporate a specific behavior. Again, I will attend the funeral, but I must be fed. I will do that behavior, but I must have something in return. Now, again, I want to thank you very much for your patronage. I salute you with the mantra of the Hunger Games. May the odds be ever in your favor. And, of course, I mean that unless we're in the same competition. Then it's every man for himself. You have a blessed day.